they will give you a crazy sign-on bonus. So I think my sign-on bonus for the first year was like 95000 and for the second year, it was like $72,000. Um, so that keeps you for two years. So that's like $150,000 just on top of my base salary. So talk about entry-level cybersecurity product managers, which I would possibly don't really exist. It's hard uh -huh. to really be entry level in anything in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. assume somebody who's an entry level cybersecurity product manager has been doing product management elsewhere in their career. So technically, they're not really entry level. Yeah. But could you give people a realistic idea of like what salaries they could expect, uh, give or take, uh, whether it's you know a fame company or yeah. just a, a normal company? Yeah. So I always break it down like two ways um there is so i started out as a project manager and there are different levels to it so i could have been a basic product project manager and i just handled like the administrative stuff which is still a great um a great career path or you can go and be a technical project manager and a technical product manager and a basic product manager um there's always going to be a differentiation in salary when you up level your skills and you add a different layer to a role. So like an entry level project manager, I would say would probably make 60,000 maybe, uh, depending on what skills. And when I say entry level, it's not like you don't have any leadership or management skills. You may not have specific project management work history, but you still have um, skills where you've led different teams. You might have been the project manager for your sororities project or something big um, and have years of experience kind of um, leading organizations, leading something from start to finish, keeping the budget on track and managing like leadership stakeholder communications. That does not have to be in the workspace. Um, so if you are just like switching over to an entry level project management role that's not technical, I would say about fifty to sixty thousand is reasonable. Um, if you are a technical, like on a technical side, I do think it is it's a little more challenging to switch to a technical role from an entry level. Um, so it, it, you're just going to have to show a different level of technical acumen because it's going to be really influential to the role. Uh, but if you switch over for entry level technical product manager position, I would say probably around 70 to 80,000 for entry level. Um, and it just grows from there. Like once you get maybe three to five years experience, sometimes even two is enough. But most most positions want you to have three before you can kind of climb to like a senior level or something else. Uh, then that's when you start getting into like the hundred thousands. And it depends on like what type of like how deep you're going to go. Um, I think it is interesting because from a, like if you're talking FANG versus a non-FANG company, um, I think some fang companies get away with like their reputation and they'll give you more equity versus the pay. Like I know Amazon was like that initially, like they had a salary cap and they would like really hook you in with their equity, which is like your stock bonuses that you can get. Um, so I think the base for everybody was like 160 initially. And that's, that's since changed. Um, but they would throw you like, $150,000 in equity or $200,000 in equity. And it's like, okay, you put that all together, you're making like $300,000 projected. Um, so I think fame companies have gotten away with doing that more. Right. Um, but there are some like Google who pays who pay really well, but you'll see that for more of the technical roles that you're going to be able to ask for more money. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, you know, just since I think you're probably the first, no, you're the second thing Amazon person I've had on here. And I forgot to ask them this in a while back because that was before I wrote questions down. Um, what them, what those sign-ons look like from time to time? I know they'd be crazy. <laughs> uh, so it is crazy. Like Amazon gets you in like a four-year structure. So they'll give you like your base salary and then... I think my sign on bonus for the first year was like 95,000 and for the second year it was like 72,000. 
Um, so that keeps you for two years. So that's like one hundred and fifty something thousand dollars just on top of my base salary. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you get your base salary and then the last two years. So their packages are built for you kind of to stay four years. Um, so the last two years, you'll get most of the equity that you negotiated or that you came in on. So they really feel like, you know, we're building long term strategies. We want people that are invested. that are going to put their best foot forward for the long right. haul. And so if we give them just the money up front, like money isn't important to us. If they're performing, the equity is going to go up and, you know, the company is going to do better. The stock is going to be higher. They're more invested in doing well across the four years because their money could go up. Um, and so you'll see like. I think for my stock, like 5% hit the first year and I got the big sign-on bonus. Then the third year, it's like 10% hits and you get a smaller sign-on bonus. Then the, the third year, it's like 40% of my stock hits and I get no sign-on bonus. And then fourth year, it's all, sign, it's all stock and no sign-on bonus. But it's like, I want, I want to do well because I might have got... 70 units, but the price of that changes based on how well the company is doing. 